Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to come to you in Jesus' name this morning. We know, Father God, that we're two or three are gathered together. There you're in the midst. We thank you, Father God, that we can approach your word full of faith and great expectation, Father God, because we know that your word is for us and we're for your word. We give you praise and honor and glory this morning, Father God, for having your way in our lives, accomplishing the thing that you set us to do, Lord. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Leslie called me this morning, wanted to know what the, or last night, wanted to know what the topic of our sermon was. I couldn't decide. So she called this morning, I barely decided. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let you uh, decide the rest of it. I, I had it in my heart. What, what the Lord's been dealing with me about is believing and the ordination to believe. And that's what I eventually settled on the title of this message is the ordaining. It's the ordaining. Anyway, we're going to read in Romans chapter 9, starting off with a great round of verse 14. Well, let's go on back to verse 11. Here he's discussing Jacob and Esau. It says, For the children being not yet born, having done, have, having done, neither done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that called. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have com compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore has he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he'll harm. Thou wilt say then unto thee, Why does he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? No, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that is formed, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he has before prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And he, as he has said in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them, You are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, God, through the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, and remnant shall be saved. And he shall finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work shall be the Lord make upon the earth. And as I as they had said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath has left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after the righteousness have attained righteousness? have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness, which is of faith. But Israel, which falleth after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. And it is, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, the rock of offense, and whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, 
I've often wondered, and I'm sure that you, many of you have, about those who don't believe, like uh, the Jewish race, the Jewish religion, the Muslims, and any of those people that, that don't believe in the Lord Jesus. And we know that God loves them just like he loves us. But according to what the Bible says, that, well, let me, let me just repeat this to you, then, then we'll go from there. You remember when the Lord said to Peter, he said, Peter, whom do, the, do thou say that I am? Mm -hmm. And he said, thou art the, the, son, the son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And <coughs> then Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. And he said, And upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the thing that I want to show you here today is he's not only talking about the worldwide church that we think about when we read that. <clears throat> all the believers that believe on the name of the Lord Jesus and all those that don't believe on the name of the Lord Jesus. He's talking about me specifically. He's talking about you specifically. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Well, that makes me thrilled. Because the gates of hell are not going to prevail against me. It's not going to prevail against you. How can I declare that? Everybody knows that as a human being, we're fallible. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Amen. I mean, if you should ever stop to count the, <coughs> the ways that you, <coughs> excuse me, the ways that you missed it, we missed it in a lot of ways. Amen. Amen. God never misses it. Amen. He didn't say upon this rock, George Pope will build my church. He didn't say upon this rock, Martin Luther would build my church. He didn't say upon my rock, the Catholic church would be built here. He said upon my rock, I will build my church. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. We heard the other, day, the other evening, Pastor John was talking about how Paul, when he started his church, built it right in the, in, in the he described the Corinthians, as someone to minister to was, was a very difficult place. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were earthly and fleshly and devilish. But Paul built it right in there. That wasn't Paul that built that church there. It was God inside of Paul that built that church there. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we can look to ourselves and say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. You hear Pastor John talking about many times about he never uh, pictured himself being a public speaker or having standing up and giving messages or anything like that because he's, he was introverted. But the same was true for my wife and I and when we were when we were uh, grew up in the world, we didn't know anything but things we shouldn't know. That's those are the things that we did. I mean, we grew up drinking and, and carousing and fighting and carrying on and all kinds of stuff. All of a sudden, she gets saved. And then after that, she gets me saved. <laughs> I didn't want to be a pastor. She didn't want to be a pastor. She didn't want me to be a pastor. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Amen. But... God was involved and God had issues there. God wanted us to be a certain way. That's right. Amen. We didn't come willingly. We come dragging our feet. <laughs> our fingernails scratching on the windows and the door. We didn't want to go. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. Why is that? Because it's not that we, we would withhold anything from God. It wasn't our intention. But we suspected that we couldn't do it. We suspected that we wouldn't be strong enough, good enough, know enough. None of us had any education to speak of, even, even worldly education. All we knew was like the Corinthians. We knew just what made us feel good. 
But the thing about it is, the church that we were born into didn't teach us. They weren't a teaching church. They were a salvation church. They get you saved. Excuse me. <clears throat> but they didn't teach us. But what happened is that God was working in us in spite of the church. And he led us to read his word and led us to study his word. And we found in his word that he was working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. We can look at the Bible. I, I gave this testimony many times in the past. It was a good while before I ever got, I ever did tithes. I'd give offerings. <laughs> I'd give gifts. I didn't do the tithes. And my my the thing that affected me was the pastor had a better car than I did. And I said, I told my wife many times, why should I give any money to him? He's driving a nice ride. We don't we struggle. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the flesh talking. That's right. You follow what I'm saying? But I wanted to do that. I wanted to be a part of tithing. I wanted to be a part of all this. Even though I didn't understand and didn't know the benefits of it, the church never taught it. My understanding in that church was if you didn't tithe, you were going to hell. But that's not so. It's a form of believing, and it's a form of being able to demonstrate the love of God. The Bible says, herein is love, if we keep his commandments, his commandments aren't given to us to dominate us or to do something or to be mean to us. He's saying he's, his commandments are to us like going down the road and somebody say, don't step there, there's a snake over there. Don't do that over there because there's poverty over there. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? He's trying to help us and trying to promote us there's nobody for you any more than God is for you. You're not even for yourself as much as God is. That's right. Isn't that right? So anyway, we can see here by this scripture alone. How about power? <laughs> I'm not going to keep you long, but, <laughs> but I'm going to choose to write books for a sermon. But anyway, we can see here that the secret to the whole thing that God is showing us is this. That we were a people that were never called as people before, but we're now we're called as people. We were someone who never had mercy before, but now we have mercy. We were someone who never had forgiveness before. And if you stop and think about it, you don't have any forgiveness in the world. You don't have any mercy in the world. I mean... You play, you pay. Right. How many times have you heard that mm -hmm. in your life? It's in God's handiwork. It's in God's creation where you find mercy, where you find forgiveness. Yes. Amen. One of the things that has helped me over the years is to remember, and I forget it sometimes, and have to be reminded of it. <clears throat> sometimes right in the middle of a of some seemed like no apparent reason the Lord will bring something to my mind and then I, I, I laugh. I say, yeah, you're right. It is right. But here's the thing. God's not interested in forgiving murder. He's not interested in forgiving any kind of sin. God is interested in forgiving you. Amen. God can't have anything to do with sin. God is righteous and holy. Amen. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir. But he's after you. He's got you righteous and holy. Amen. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, the devil will come to you and he'll point out sins to you. Yeah, but look at this sin here in your life. Mm -hmm. See, that's what he did to me when it comes time for, to be a preacher. I didn't want to be a preacher. Matter of fact, we, we, we desired another preacher instead. <coughs> and attempted to, to follow, the, follow that pastor. But the thing about it was, he wasn't the pastor that God called. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It wasn't his fault that he failed. He jumped in there and tried to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But it was God who builds his church and calls his people. 
you might think that, well, I don't know why I'm here. Let me tell you something. I know why you're here. God brought you here. Amen. You understand me? He has purposes in your life. Amen. And and if, if he has his way, everything's going to go smooth for you. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? His problem is getting us to believe. It shouldn't be because he's done everything that it caused that pertain given us everything that pertains on the life and godliness mm -hmm. to him that loved us. Isn't that right? Amen. But why then did I have trouble believing in time? Because the world had taught me. Many times on a Friday night I stayed home because I didn't have enough money. And I, I didn't like staying at home. I thought, man, I'm missing all the fun. There's probably going to be two or three fights. I won't even get to see them. <laughs> I heard so-and-so was breaking up her husband. Man, I could probably be there. I mean, those are the kinds of things that go through your mind. You follow what I'm saying? So, so here it is. That taught me. No wonder that the Bible says that present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable one for the Lord. And he says the way to do it is to by renewing of your mind. The first thing you have to you know to renew your mind is that it works. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's preaching too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Amen. So when we think about it, is that the world had taught me, and I brought that teaching with me, and I'll give it authority in my life. It don't need to be no authority in your life. I remember the day that I said to my wife, she said, Well, what are we doing this week? Because she wanted to do it all along. I wouldn't let her. Right. I counted her money when she got home. <laughs> I've told this story many times. I counted her money when she got home. I said, how much did you get, dollar? You better not have get more than that. <laughs> <laughs> because cigarettes at that time was about five dollars a carton. <laughs> how much are they now? <laughs> And it's rough to be without cigarettes. Mm -hmm. We didn't live in town where you could walk up and down the alley and shop <laughs> down the street looking for long butts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me I'm the only one ever did that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we lived out along the road, and if you found a cigarette out along the highway, is there so long, it was y'all. <laughs> So we were taught by the world against God. Oh, Isn't that right? But God taught us, was teaching us that we belong to Him. We needed a whole new way of thinking. We needed a whole new way of being. I remember thinking to myself, man, the Bible says, I mean, it's flat out says it. There's no way around it. It says all things are possible to him who believes. Amen. Amen. I would say, well, I can't blame nobody but myself because I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah. I tried to believe it, but I couldn't believe it. But you know what? I could believe it. But he said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I knew it was up to me. Yeah. Isn't that right? right? So I said, Lord, I'm going to try to get in here to the lowest level. As I get in at the lowest level, I'm going to trust in you to be adding to me and adding to me and adding to me because he said, I'll add to him the things that who has. He said, me, it'll be taken away from me and him who thinks he has it, but he don't have it. Amen. More will be taken away from him. Not by him, by the world, by the devil will take it away. Isn't that right? Amen. But he said, I'll teach you, I'll guide you, I'll direct you if you'll step out, if you'll believe. If you won't take a step, he can't do nothing. Right. Isn't that right? Because he's not like the devil. The devil don't wait for you to step out. He sets a trap for you. That's right. He'll come and get you if he can. Amen. But he can't get you if you stay with God, you stick with your church. It's no wonder God said, don't fail to assemble yourselves together, even as men or some is, but even so much more, these end times approach. That's why you need to be in your church. Amen. You need to be in your church family. It ain't only God talking through your pastor. He does teach you through your pastor and your teachers. But he also teaches you through the people sitting beside you. Amen. Amen. He teaches you through your brothers and sisters. 
I haven't talked to a lot of people really. They'll tell me, so I already been through that. I found out this, this is the way this will work, this is the way that will work. And boy, I tell you, when in the things of the world, when it comes to trimming trees, I went into the tree business, I didn't know much about the, the mechanics of I could do the, the trimming, I could climb and cut the limb off, I could pick it up, I could sell the job. But if the guy asked me what was wrong with the tree, I was sunk. I had to guess. You follow what I mean? I didn't know. But I would go and I would ask somebody. I didn't have that ability that I, I would humble myself and ask somebody. And that's the secret, that you humble yourself and ask somebody. And I would ask somebody and I would say, can you tell me, what's these little black dots I see all over these leaves? That's smoke from the engineering company. What is that? Is that soot? I said, I don't know. I asked for two or three or four. Finally, I got smart and sent a leaf up to Penn State and they sent it back and said, that's a fungus. Well, now I knew I could spray that tree with fungicide and I could save that tree. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. But I didn't know that when I went into being a tree trimmer. You don't know all the things you need to know when you go into being a Christian. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you something. The knower of it all is within you. Isn't that right? God said he'll, he'll do it. He'll be a witness to you. I, I, I used to flabbergast my wife. She knew I didn't know anything about the church. But when, as we would live and as we would go to that other church, I would say, I ain't right. She would say, what? I'd say, I ain't right. Well, I don't say, he's a preacher. You mean tell me you, you know what he know? I said, I'm telling you, he don't know what he's talking about. And he didn't in this area. I didn't say he didn't love me. I didn't say even what any other, I just said this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Why did I say this is wrong? I had a, somebody inside of me was warning me. Mm -hmm. If I would have told you whenever I went in a bar, I could be in a bar in about 15 seconds, I knew if there was trouble in there. Mm -hmm. uh, my hair stand on the back of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna end up in jail, or you're gonna end up in the hospital, you, you learn after so many years that uh, your antenna just goes up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I the guys ain't saying that they know I know I'm not <laughs> Well, the same thing was inside, got inside of me when I went in church. When I hear something that wasn't true, my antenna went up. Someone was teaching me. I remember when they got into the praise service. They got into praise service and, and they, they used songs that, that was fast and, and all that kind of stuff, and, and trying to tell me that was God. I said, if that was God, then I thought God in Kimball's Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. I went into many of bars that were dancing and jigging and going on. I went to church, they were dancing and jigging and going on. I thought, what? And the Lord told me, he said, it's the word. They ain't do anything wrong with enjoying the music, but it's the words. The words that we sing and the words that we speak and the words that we worship with God. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. I mean, I see him just turn up the volume and turn up the speed and expect everybody to, to be raptured. <laughs> I said, I didn't know. My wife said, you're just an against her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Turn with me to James 4, 7, 4, I get my other hand. Let me say this to you. If God's building his church, and you're the church, what are our expectations? Do you think I can believe what I can't believe now? Sooner or later, I'm going to believe it. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. You know that there wouldn't be a, a sickness of any kind in anybody Amen. if they believed according to the scripture. Amen. Didn't it say that? That's not my words, that's the words that's in the Bible. Is that right? Yet I know that there are things that are wrong with me that need to be undone. <coughs> and the right stuff needs to be done. So I know that I'm somewhere on that road of believing. Mm -hmm. I believe I can believe for a lot of things. I can probably believe for a lot of things you can. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there's somebody in here who can believe for a lot of things I can. Mm -hmm. 
That's the way God built his church. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. He told us, he said, there'll be gifts given among the body. Amen. Yes. I see people, whenever they come into church, they, they just automatically tithe. They just did it. Well, they could do it. Amen. I couldn't. I learned that. I know people that come into church and, and uh, a little bit of a, something happened between them and somebody else in church, somebody parking their spot, sit in their seat, whatever. And they would leave when they back. <laughs> wow, they couldn't handle that. Mm -hmm. I see other people, you could tramp on their toes, elbow them in the rib, do all kind of stuff. They never leave. You couldn't drive them away. Amen. Why? They could believe for that. Isn't that right? Yes. But my, my interest is to grow in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yes. Right. Isn't that right? Why? I've got a job to do. Why? God's raised me up in church. We already read back there in Romans, if I would have slowed up and read each verse and talked about each verse, you would have saw it, that God raised us up for an example. Amen. That means we're teachers. We're, we're to be making disciples for the Lord. I don't care if you're 10 years old or if you're 110 years old. God's got a purpose for you. He's witness in somebody's life through you. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. I used to teach a message years ago called, the Bible says, go into the world and preach the gospel. <coughs> and then I say it sometimes with words. Because we're preaching the gospel whether you know it or not. <coughs> sometimes we're preaching a bad gospel. Sometimes we're preaching a good gospel. We need to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can only do that with what we can live. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. You think it don't say something to my neighbors when they see my car going every Sunday morning? <laughs> it might say to the burger and now's your time. But I put an age over my house now, don't you? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Didn't the thought ever come to you that if you go away every day at a certain time that the burger has, a, has an advantage over you? I guess you didn't live in the town like I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and born and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. Now think about that. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Now, if I, if I submit myself to God, then I submit myself to God's word because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God. Isn't that right? Amen. And I submit myself to the Word of God. Isn't that right? Yes. What's the Word of God say about me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, could I believe to tithe? Yeah, one day I did. It took a while, but one day I did. I never gave up on it. But one day when we went to church, she said, what are you going to do today? I said, I'm going to do and tithe. She said, you are. I said, yep. I said, and if I start by the end of the week, you'll have this flyer over here and give it to me. Did I say that? But I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take God at his word. Now that's funny when we laugh and talk about it, but I'm going to tell you something. There's real, real truth and real victory there. Yes, amen. So I'm saying, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just making my way. Who is it that I was making it? All right? You submit yourself to God, and in the submitting yourself to God, you resist the devil. Amen. 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 God said, greater is he that's in you, George, than he that's in the world. The devil said, I'll knock you down flat. I'll take all your kids. I'll kill you. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll bring up lies about you. I'll tell stories when you do what nobody to know. But I'll tell them. Can you tell you all those things? Yeah. Amen. What's God say? I'm building this church. Amen. Amen. I'm building this church. I've got you in the palm of my hand. Praise God. I'll watch over you. Hallelujah. I'll bring the right people around you if you listen to me. I'll promote you. I'll make your way good. I'll make your way wonderful. 
I'll see that you have a long life and good days. The devil said, I'll kill you tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that right? God says, put your hand on the plow, don't look back. The devil says, look back, look what you did, look what you did, look what you did, look what you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? That's right. right. Let me tell you something. If we draw nigh to God, that's when we submit ourselves to God, we draw nigh to God. Right. How do we do that? We accept what God says, I am, I am. That's tough. Amen. Amen. You know yourself. If I said in here, everybody right now has doubts about who they are in God, 90% of you would stand up. Don't do it, but, but I'm telling you, it's something we struggle with. But I'll tell you what, it's like doing time. It's like anything else. It's something we can learn. Amen. How? By having our mind renewed to what the scriptures say. Is it enough for me just to read it in the word? It's enough for some people, but not for me. What helped me? What other people told me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Follow what I'm saying? God put somebody, a perfect worker, come around my path and say, George, I'm proud of you. I remember what you used to be. You were a hairball boy. You could get it all kinds of stuff. Hairball. I ain't proud of it. I'm not proud of it. But they, I mean, they knew. I've been in, I've been in jail 25, 35 times. I can't remember how many. Way over that many. Every country I was ever in, every state I was ever in. <laughs> Why? I was programmed that way. But God hits in until we cross the path and say, George, I'm proud of you. You, you ain't drank a drop for how long now? I said six weeks. Give her up, buddy. I don't know how you can get her. But my wife will tell you, after I quit drinking and started going to church, all I did it all on the spur of the moment. Stand inside the coke or inside of the corner bar and grill. I was a bartender. Stand in, in there. I, I said to myself, that's it. I never drink another drop. Well, I drank all my life. I knew I couldn't do it. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'll do this if you'll help me. I couldn't find any place where the Lord would help me. Amen. He wanted me, I thought to myself, well, he wants me to do this more than I want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I accepted the help. I said, I'll take it, Lord. Now, I'll tell you this, I did drink five times after that. And each time it was a socially acceptable place. One was a wake for Lefty Howe. When Lefty died, I went to each wake. They were given long neck bottles of Budweiser, I took them. <laughs> I felt guilty, but I took it. <laughs> Why? Well, I wasn't saved very long. And there was a lot of people in there all had long neck balls of butter. That's right. Next time I was, uh, I was uh, trimming people's trees. And every New Year's, this guy would get me to trim his trees between Christmas and New Year's. When we was done, we'd go down in his basement. He had a man cave. I mean, he had more booze in there than Cole's Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> And when he sat down and write the check out, he'd say, what do you have? And he'd get behind the bar. That was his big deal. He was his bar. I'd say, give me this or give me that. And back in them days, during the wintertime, the cold, I'd drink gingerbread. Before he shot a gingerbread. I drank it. The following year, when come time to do it again, I did his trees. $300. He paid me $300. said, what do you have? I said, give me a shot of gingerbread. The Lord said in my heart right there, he said, now you got to have a start. Mm -hmm. He said right from the right in my heart. He didn't hear me. I heard it in my heart. Mm -hmm. Cause why? God's for me. More, more than I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, now you got to have a start. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean i got to have a start? I drank one little shot of New Year's Eve. He said, this is two years, two years in a row. I said, that's right, that's a habit. It is. Understand me? Yes. That was the end of it. You follow what I'm saying? But if you draw nigh to God and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Mm -hmm. See? Now I had to listen to God. I had to pull poo poo down and shove that off and said, ah, mm -hmm. that's this. I don't know what that is talking. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this. Maybe that wouldn't have bothered any of you. It bothered me because I was an alcoholic, I was a drunkard. 
was a drunkard ever since I was 14 years old. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you think would have happened to me if I would have stayed a drunkard? Yeah. I'd be dead. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of short jump to jump from alcohol to drugs. You understand what I'm saying? They're dying left and right now with drugs. Every day you pick up a paper, somebody's dying of drugs. Isn't that right? Amen. If God wanted, his promise to me was to give me long life and good days. How could he keep me alive if I was going to go out and, and, and ride herd with the devil? Mm -hmm. Right? His only, his only chance for me was to keep me going on a straight and narrow. Now, I, I'll tell you, my wife will tell you that whenever I decided not to uh, drink anymore, people would pull up in front of my house. Now, they'd never done this before. When I was, when I was a, uh, wasn't a Christian, if I was without money, out of money sitting at home because I didn't have no money to go where, nobody coming home to horn in front of my door and said, come on, folks, we got the booze, we'll take care of you tonight. You bought me one a time or two. No, I won't. You can drink our booze today. Nobody ever did that. <laughs> Why, the world don't love you. That's right. But here I was, swore up to <laughs> I wasn't ever going to drink again. Boom, 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 boom. I go outside, guess who's there? Some of them old run buddies. Come on, Paul, we got a case. Come on, we got a case out of there. Come on. Where are you going? We're going down to Shippensburg, spring fun. Sure fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, I hooked me on the car. I said, it's hard but I'm going to tell him no. I said, I can't go. I ain't going. I quit. I'm done with that. I ain't never going out again long by then. You know the truth of the matter is, this is a fact. I told somebody the other day. I've been telling them this for a long time. Even if I quit going to church, even if I got mad at God and thought he was mad at me and didn't want nothing to do with him, no way, shape, or form, I wouldn't drink. Amen. Amen. I found out that it's a, it, you ever see the movie of uh, Richard Cockburn? I watched that on TV one time. And he's drinking. And he offers this girl a drink. She said, I wouldn't put a thief in my mouth with all my brains. I thought, what a wonderful thing to say. It was absolutely true. I put a thief in your mouth to rock your brains. Isn't that right? I'm just telling you like it is. But I'll tell you one thing. God said he'd build this church. Amen. So he built me. He kept reaffirming me. Bringing people across my path. There's people who came to church for no other reason except God sent them in there because they were good at exhortion. They would exhort people mm -hmm. and lift them up and encourage them. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? I didn't have a lick of sense of how to do any kind of business or whatsoever of any shape, way, shape, or form. But when God decided it was time to bless me, and when he was building the church, he brought in don't mingle with his wife, Diane. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Don Engel was a wonderful, wonderful church man. Amen. I mean, he, he, he could go out front there. He, he, take, he could take it. He could go anywhere and do anything when it comes to doing that kind of a thing. You follow what I'm saying? I wouldn't have liked Don Engel when I wasn't saved. <laughs> he had been established to me, somebody to watch. But God sent him in here. What for? For that reason. Amen. To do what he was called to do. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? And God, and he did it. I can tell you right now, this church has been here since in the 70s. But I can tell you this. I know at least two or three times that Don Engel saved this church single-handedly. God saved it through him. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I, I, I can look back here, and there's people here who've been here a long time. And I can say to myself, I remember one time whenever the church uh, up on uh, Queen Street, when uh, I took my family to church, my kids was little. We went in there, it was the old pagan uh, clubhouse. And before that, it was the uh, Eastbourne Tavern. They made the biggest hamburgers in town. 
Only old people know that. <laughs> they made a one about Amber. Anyway. So a lot of us went there for Amber. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we went in there one Sunday morning. We had about 35 or 40 people. We went in there one Sunday morning. That, when you got 30 people in there, you were packed. Wasn't nothing in there. Wasn't even no pews, no seats, no, nowhere to sit, nothing. Only thing was there was one top lid. We used to uh, take boxes of uh, candy bars. Most people like Clark bars, and this was a Clark bar box with just a lid when it flattens. And that was laying on the floor. Everything else was gone. Took me a minute to understand what was going on. Well, the church got divided. And they decided to go somewhere else. And the pastor at the time said, Don't nobody tell George. Mm -hmm. So I woke up with the church gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want to do. I went in the back of the church and laid down on my face before the Lord. And started to pray, and, and pretty soon I, I prayed about 15, 20 words, and I ran out of words. I thought, no, I don't know what to do now, Lord, I just don't know what to do. I, I was hurt so bad, all I could do was moan and groan before the Lord. And so I thought, well, I'm going to pray in tongues. So I started praying in tongues, laying on my face before the Lord. It wasn't very long. I heard deep inside of me, just like I did that day when he said, now that you're starting to have it. I'm talking about that shot of ginger brandy. He said, right inside of my heart, he said, what are you bawling about? <laughs> he talks to me like I can hear him. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm on the wrong track here. So I started to calm down a little bit. Next thing I heard inside of here was, I didn't hear these in verbal words, I heard them in my heart. He said, I ain't left you. Amen. I promised I'd never leave you nor forsake you, clean under the end of the earth. Yeah. And if you've done something to cause all the rest of them to leave, I won't leave you. Because I said, no matter what kind of sin, no matter what kind of hell you get into, no matter what, nothing shall separate you from my love. Amen. Amen. I heard all that right in here. Yeah. I got up, wiped my eyes, dried my face off. Walked outside, my wife's standing there. She said, what are we going to do? I said, God said, have the church. Mm -hmm. That's right, amen. Mm -hmm. She said, how are we going to start? I picked up that Clark box lid, <laughs> held it out. I said, put your offerings in there, your tithe or whatever it is. Put it in there. We're going to take up the offering. We took up the offering. I said, do you know any songs? We can't be the one of us singing them. <laughs> <laughs> We started to sing. We sang. After a bit, I said, find a place to sit down. I got up front and took the Bible. I started to teach. First time I did. Before that, the Lord had called me from the beginning to do it. I wouldn't do it. It's like I wouldn't do the time. Well, I hadn't grown in that area yet. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. But that time I grew. Isn't that right? Amen. Right. So anyway, we got home that Sunday morning. I remember when I was talking to the Lord back in the room after he started drying my tears and getting me up and dusting me off and put me back in the fight. Go get him, Tyron. Amen. He said to me, don't worry about them guys. I'm building this church. Right. I'll bring them in. Amen. Amen. About one o'clock, I had this knock on the door. Went open the door, and there stood Butch. <laughs> Brother Butch, what? He said, uh, I just feel like we ought to go to church. You guys mind if we go? I said, there's the first one. Amen. See, the Lord will do it. If we listen, what time is it? Amen. What time we close?
You got the, you got the okay. head time. So, Joel, now the card resists the devil, he'll flee from you. Turn to me, Luke 10, chapter 2. Luke 10. This is why I never can get much done when you talk to you. <laughs> But we are guilty just as much as listening to the Lord, or not listening to the Lord, as we are anything else. Amen. Yeah. One time I was I was at the at the church, you know, Queen Street, and a woman came in and sat in the back. I knew her name. I hadn't seen her in twenty years, but I knew her name. I walked by, I said, hello there, stranger. She said, no, I'm no stranger. I said, well, nice to see you. And I, I felt the tug of the Lord to talk to her. But I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not social. I, I said, that's this handicapped scar from the wars of the world. You understand what I mean? I know when I come into church in the morning, there's two or three of you there talking, uh, about something, I walk right by. I won't. I won't come up and butt into your conversation and shake your hand. It don't mean that I wouldn't have shook your hand if you were standing there, because I would. And I'm glad to see you, and I'm happy you're there. But I don't interrupt on you. I, I just I've never trained that way. You follow what I mean? Amen. But I didn't pay any attention to that. Talk to this lady. Told you I knew her, I didn't know her. I knew her whole story almost <coughs> up to a certain point. I didn't I didn't know her after about five years that I knew her, and then I didn't know her anymore. I mean I knew who she was, that was it. It wasn't very long, about two weeks after that, it came out in the paper <coughs> that this pastor, well, no, this make-believe pastor, this worker from the devil who had got in the church and somewhere and took it over and, but anyway she was taking a bath and he threw the radio in the bathtub and electrocuted her oh my, oh my. Yeah, you remember that story came out in the paper the devil said see there you could have talked to her you could have found out she, she was having trouble you could have probably saved that woman's life See, the devil don't quit just because you got saved. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? He'll manufacture all kinds of things to come on your, on your way. But it's good to be, get yourself in a place where you get sensitive to the word of the Lord. Let him take you where he wants to take you. You follow him? And he'll move you from precept upon precept, line upon line. He'll get you to a place to where you'll grow from one thing to another. You remember the, 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 in the Gospels where it talks about the people that were invested in the things of God. One man doubled everything he had to get. And the Lord said, well done, that good and faithful servant. The next guy didn't get as much, but he'd done what he could. God said, well done, that good and faithful servant. Isn't that right? So all he needs is for you to do, try and be willing. And you'll hear from him, well done, my good and faithful servant. Isn't that right? Amen. All right. Where are we at? Luke 10? Yeah. Verse 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Think about that. I might see that a little different than you see it. Don't, don't be happy that the spirits are subject to you, but they are subject to you. But that ain't something to say, hang your hat on. You follow what I'm saying? What, what do you hang your hat on? 
You hang your hat on the fact of what? Your names are written in heaven. Why? Because God's building this church. God's building your church. If you listen to him and stay where he's got you, he'll work it. He'll bring it right through the end. The devil may try to give you cancer. He may try to do this. He may try to bust your marriage up. He may try to get you fired. He may try to take your house. He may try to do all kinds of things. But if you stick with God, it'll come up right in the end somehow. Amen. Isn't that right? Yes. I can remember when I, when I was little, I can remember all kinds of tales of happening in the churches. I can remember tales about holy rollers and all kinds of stuff. I mean, that's the things that talk about. I can remember about old robbers. Everybody swore up and down in, in a lot of churches that holy rollers, that, that the uh, old robbers was of the devil, mm. and all this and all that. But let me tell you, I love the old robbers. Mm -hmm. Old robbers could get it done. Amen. He couldn't in the beginning. But he listened to God, and God took him to a place where sickness and disease obeyed him. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. He'll take you to that place where sickness and the disease will obey you. Mm -hmm. At least for sure, somebody in the church, in the congregation. Isn't that right? Amen. And God said that he would cause those people to be illuminated. You would get to know who was able to do that. Who has more pull. I'm the only guy that whenever it comes to me to pray, I'll pick Sister Jeanette. <laughs> I'll get my wife. I'll get Diane in. Why? I've seen them in action. I've seen them in circles. With blind people standing in the middle. I've seen them pray and nothing happened. I've seen them pray the next time the person comes, a couple weeks later, get in the circle. Not for the first time, for the second time. What happened? Get them in to pray again. They prayed again. Guess what happened? Walked out of there looking. Mm -hmm. Walked out of there seeing. Okay. Walked out of there seeing. <laughs> Why is that? God used them. Why did God use them? Because they wouldn't quit. Because yeah. they said, all right, God, take me where you want me to go. <coughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. What's, the, what's the pastor always tell you? Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, do more than you want to do, and end up killing you for it. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. God will be better than that if you let him. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. All right. Turn to me to Colossians 1. I used to say to myself, Lord, if you show it, show it to me in the Word, I'll know it's so. Then turn right around and lie. <laughs> if you're honest with yourself, you come to that place. Then we just read over there where it says, Submit yourself to God, resist the devil. Then it said, Humble yourself. Then it said, About mourn and weep. I was seeing the word where it said, Do this, do that. You don't think just because I gave my tithes that day to the Lord, I'd ever run out of money, do you? No, the devil worked real hard to get me out of money. There was times I got out of money. There was times I probably even said, but Lord, you said. Mm -hmm. You ever do that? Mm -hmm. Colossians 1, start verse 9. For this cause also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us fit and able 
Meet means fit and able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of every creature. Now listen to that. Didn't we just see over there in those other scriptures that we studied, we talked about here, that the Bible says that we are given a chance to be just like God and do the things that God said to do. He talked about the stumbling stone. Talked about Jesus being a stumbling stone. Who was Jesus sent to? The world. He was sent to the Jews. Matter of fact, the woman came to Jesus for healing. He said, Jesus said no. He said, this, this is for the children. This is for the children of God. And she said, but Lord, even the dogs, he feed off the crumbs that falls off the table. Well, he recognized that as a great, wonderful faith. He said, so be it unto you. And she got healed. But what, who was it for? It was for the Jews. Isn't that right? But we see here that our place is we're called, and we're called for mercy. Does that mean that I'm to receive mercy over a certain time? Oh, I'm not walking. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean that we're, we're to be given mercy just because you did something wrong? No. Does that mean I'm to be given forgiveness just because I did something wrong? No. To me, that means I am forgiven. Amen. I am merciful. I've got mercy. Amen. I'm steeped in mercy. My whole relationship with God, I can't get to God without being bathed in mercy and forgiveness. Amen. I can't get to it no other way. But the fact that God loves me and God, now I know God loves me. I've got a witness within myself. Amen. Don't tell me you don't have a witness within yourself. I mean, you catch yourself from time to never. It, it didn't be the only witness you got. Mm -hmm. But I got a witness then. I know God loves me. Mm -hmm. Not because I, I got a, a good job or not because we got a, a nice church now. Not because of this or that. It's because I have a witness within myself. God said it and I, I got the witness. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Amen. That I might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Now listen. <coughs> Excuse me. All things are possible to him who loves God. Amen. There isn't anything you can't believe God for. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And realizing your strength is a big help along the way. Isn't that right? Amen. But here's the thing. We're going to get to the place where we got to close. But let me just show you this. It isn't just reading it in the Bible. There are times that I read it in the Bible, and it's because it's written in the Bible, I know that God's not a man that he can lie. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In him is no shadow of turning, no darkness to perverseness of any kind. He's the same every day. Isn't that right? Amen. If he loved anybody, he loves me. Isn't that right? Amen. I can believe all that thing. Yet, there are times when I go to approach things that I didn't believe for, and it's a stumbling stone to me. I know that Jesus made me fit and able to be an inheritor of the things of God, of the things of life. He made me, presented me spotless before the throne. I know he did. Yet there come a place, there's times where even though I can read it with my eyes, I need help. You know how I got that help? <clears throat> By doing just exactly what God said. Herein is love that you keep the commandments. I said, well, Lord, I'm going to start doing the things that I can do, keeping the promises that I can promise, and then we'll just have to trust you to build your church. In other words, you take me where you were, how far you can take me. I can remember when my grandson lost his leg. Terrible tragedy. Awful, awful thing to think about probably more awful for him. But I remember saying, you can't, you can't, from here on out, Jake, you're going to have to take charge. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to take charge of your mind. 
You can't think what, what your natural mind might want you to think. You're going to have to take charge. Amen. Don't let that stump speak to you. Amen. You can do anything. Keep yourself that way. You understand what I mean? Yes. So he decided to be a weightlifter. Now he's lifting over 450 pounds. Mm -hmm. Just two arms. Think 450 pounds. Think of that. I remember when he, just, he told me about when he first started. But I, I'm interested in stuff like that. And I just asked him in conversation. He said, well, I went to the gym. I wanted to see could I lift. He said, I started lifting. Said, and I started to be able to lift a little more, and a little more, and a little more, and a little more. And he said, I decided that I could lift. <laughs> and he didn't know where it was going to take him. But he said, I, I thought I'd ride it out to the end to see where it would take him. So now you, you might see him over in Dubai lifting in the World Olympics, mm -hmm. where he's registered up to top somewhere, mm -hmm. where he's won North America championship already, all kinds of things. Started out with lifting probably 100 pounds. You follow what I'm saying? That's what we got to do. We got to do that. We said, oh, well, at least I can go to church. God said, don't fail to assemble yourself together. So at least I'm going to go to church. You know what I mean? God told me to be an exhorter. God told me to encourage and to comfort. I meet someone and they don't have my problems, I'll, I'll encourage them. I'll comfort them. If, if, they, if they have my problems, we'll find somebody to do us both. Because let me tell you, when you've got a problem, you need somebody to help you. Amen. You need more than one witness. The Bible says that the word of God is established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Isn't that right? Amen. So I was able to take the scripture. Look, the Lord in there. I was able to take the scripture where the Lord said that if we were a tithe bearer, he would rebuke and devour for our sake. I also knew ahead of time, that the Bible says, if God be for me, who could be against me? Amen. Amen. I knew that ahead of time. But, there was a big difference. The Bible says that if I would become a tithe bearer, God would give the devourer for my sake. I said to myself, well, I'm a tither now. Then God's rebuking the devourer for my sake. I had that witness inside of me. God said it, I took him up for it, and guess what? God started to rebuke the devourer. Amen. He wanted to rebuke that devourer all along. But what happened? I opened the doors for him. Why? God won't force it on you. You have to volunteer for it. You follow what I'm saying? I found it out about the demon spirits. I couldn't believe that, the, that I was lifted up over all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> there were areas in my life that I had trouble getting control of. I saw in the scripture where Jesus said that the people oh, I'm moving around. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stay still. <clears throat> Maybe not. They came to Jesus and they said Lord we just watched you cast the demon out of that kid. The man brought him to us. We, we, all of us got together. We couldn't cast that demon out. What was wrong? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. And he said, how be it? This kind go about by, by fasting and prayer. I read that for 10 years. And I thought, this kind of demon, needs, you need to fast and pray to get this kind of demon out. He wasn't talking about demons. He was talking about unbelief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I realized that God had it in there for me to be able to get unbelief out of my life. There were areas of God that I wanted to walk in. I wanted to be a part of. I wanted God to use me in. I knew people that I wanted to get saved. <clears throat> Did you? Mm -hmm. I couldn't get them saved. And I found out the Lord said this unkind of, that there's something you can do about unbelief. So I did. I started to fast and I started to pray. If you come to our house, we fasted probably two or three times a week. Pretty every week we fasted at least 
one day. And sometimes we fast a half a day for a week. But then there are days when we fasted all week. Then there's days when we fasted all month. You follow what I'm saying? Guess what? After a while, after we got to live in a fasted life and, and got to control in our body, taking authority over our body and, and presenting our body to God, a living sacrifice, guess what? God started to take us places that needed controls over devils. We didn't look for them. We were ready. Why? How were we ready? We, we, we availed ourselves to the things of God. We walked in the things of God. When I was in the world, you could have never convinced me of any of this. I'd have said, hocus pocus. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what is the truth. The power of God is there. Just because you don't experience it at the time, don't mean it ain't real. It's more real than anything else. Amen. It's just next door. Open the door and win. Do you follow what I'm saying? God says you've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. It's there for you. You can never divorce yourself from mercy and from forgiveness. I told this story. I'm going to finish with this story. I was not a man to forgive. And I would take up your cause. If you told me something and somebody wronged you, I'd give Connie to that. Sister Connie was with me one time. She saw me get somebody that done my business, but I got him anyhow. Why? That's just how I am. You're, you're how you are. But God's got use for you. Now my wife told me about somebody doing her wrong. Conversation took about 30 seconds. It stuck in me for 12 years. I come walking around the square one time coming from Hatmaker's Bar headed to the National Hotel. Guy calls me over. Oh, come over here, come over here. I walked over. So I want to introduce you to my friend. Guess what he said? The name of my old name that my wife told me about. Mm. It stuck in me for 12 years. I never thought of another thing, never took another breath. Decked it right there on the street. <laughs> Cops come, I went to jail, it didn't bother me a bit. <laughs> Why? That's just how I was. You follow what I'm saying? Forgiveness didn't come easy with me. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? I'll tell you, I found out. Now that I'm a Christian, I can't be divorced from forgiveness. Amen. I can't be divorced from mercy. Amen. i got to forgive. Amen. That was tough for me. And, I, and the Lord finally told me, he said, I didn't tell you you had to feel like it. I just told you to do it. Amen. And that witness come inside of me. I said, do you mean I can forgive without feeling like it? He said, yeah. I said, okay, I forgive him. Did I feel like it? Nope. Do I feel like it now? Yep. Why? It comes. It might take you, I don't know, it might take you a couple years. It's hard to forgive them when they keep doing it to you over and over again. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah. But what's it say in the Bible? What if he does it 749 times a day? Yeah. What did Peter say? Lord, give me more faith. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah. Give me more faith, Lord. That's a tough one. What did he say? You can do it. Faith a grain of mustard seed. I got that much. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Yes. You can do it all. I don't care what it is. You can do it all. If you want to. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. You might need eight or ten people in this congregation telling you you can. And when you make a few little headways, they love you enough to see the headway that you make and tell you about it. I come in here, I come in here in the morning and I see people, as soon as I see them, my heart's glad. You know why? I ain't never found nothing but love from them. That's all I ever got was graciousness and love. Graciousness and love. Isn't that right? Amen. Learn anything? Yep. Praise yep. the Lord. Yep. I'm going to pray and dismiss, but before I do, we're going to call the people up here to pray for people. And they can come up.
And then, if anybody wants to take a step farther in faith, wants to be able to believe something that you haven't been able to believe in the past, or anything like that, you want to grow, you need help in anything, they're here for you. Amen. Amen. You're not mandated to do it, they're for you. Amen. Isn't that right? right. Don't you appreciate that free air, air Jesus? Yeah. Yep. This is free air. Amen. You need to come and get it. Isn't that right? Amen. Okay. Don't be even blessed to pray. <laughs> Father, we just praise and thank you, Lord, for your victory today. It's true, Lord, you said you built this church. What you built it on was mercy and forgiveness. Lord, every one of us, if, mer if, if, mer if, if mercy was green and if forgiveness was yellow, every one of us is out of here with stripes that are, are green and yellow because we can't even be a part of the body of Christ, Lord without mercy and forgiveness. Lord, it's how we get in. That's how we're going to be there all the time that we're here. So thank you, Father God, for showing us, Lord, that you have control over us. You have control over this situation. And you're not leading us any faster than the, than the little ones can travel. Those of us that want to go faster, you'll lead them. Those that want to go middleweight, you'll lead them. And those who only want to be 30 weights, you'll lead them. And Father, you're building this church, and you're alive and well. And you're alive and well in these people's life, Lord. The people that are sick can be well. The people that are bound can be free. The people, Lord God, uh, can go forth and teach the gospel. They can be used of you, Lord, in operating in the things of God. Lord, they can also get an inward witness to every part of this scripture. They can get it within their heart, Lord, the double witness. Lord, that there be no, ever no taking them from it. You will not convince them ever that it's not going to happen because it is going to happen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.